G'day everyone, this afternoon I'm putting my kayak on Lake Nilakuti to see if I can catch a yellow belly. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Right now as you can see behind me, Lake Nilakuti is currently chock-a-block, it is full. See? There it is just down there at the bottom of that valley. <laughs> this is Mount Samaria. Mount Samaria overlooks Lake Nilakuti. When you're on Lake Nilakuti and you look across the lake, you can see a big mountain. Well, I'm right up near the top of that mountain. If I just go just over here... That's the top of Mount Samaria, just there. Absolutely beautiful up here. I haven't been up here for years. There's a lot of hiking spots, a few campsites. It's just a beautiful state park. And I thought I might just come up here for a drive and a look. And have a look down on Lake Nilakuti. Anyway, it's time to turn around and head down, head for the lake. I've got to go back that way about 15 kilometres, cross the river, then go back up the other side. I won't be there for about 20 minutes. Keep gate closed at all times. That's a gate. I'll just lift my kayak straight over the top of that. Righto, folks, I've made it to Lake Nilakuti. It took about 40 minutes. It was a bit longer than I expected because I hit roadworks and I stopped and took, took a few wildlife photos. But anyway, I like this part of the lake. It's quiet. It's, uh, it's in a bit of a bay here. I can paddle around in this bay over here as much as I like and it won't get too rough. And if it gets nice and calm later on, I can just paddle around that bend and add into the main part of the lake. Righto, folks, everything's in. I'm about to set sail. I'll quickly run through what I'm taking with me. An esky with some ice bricks to put on my legal size yellow belly in. I've got my life jacket, my PFD1 life jacket. I'll go, there's some stuff in there, I'll go into that shortly. My paddle, tackle box, which I'll talk about in a minute, a landing net, and a fishing rod. Now, in the waterproof bag, this is a waterproof bag, I have spare GoPro batteries and a power pack to charge them. Sunglasses, which I'll put on in a minute. My brown snake blades knife. My pliers, which can stay out here, so too can my knife. My phone. My reading glasses are in the sunglasses pouch. My asthma puffer and my car keys. Oh. A tape measure to make sure any fish I catch is legal. And a mask, just in case I need one. I don't know why I would. But I'm taking it because you don't need to wear a mask when you're undertaking physical activity. And I'm going to be puffed paddling the kayak. <laughs> right, now I'll just run through the lures I'm going to be using. Lake Nilakuti isn't a clear lake at the best of times. The water's always quite murky. And at the moment, it's particularly murky. The clarity's down to about 30 centimetres. I'm going to be starting off using this Jiggle Fishing Lipless Crankboat, a little ripper. And it is a little ripper. I love these things. They're only about 10 bucks each. And they vibrate very well. I just think they're a fantastic uh, yellow belly and redfin lure, and I've caught cod on them too. Now I'm also taking, I've got two or three, two or three of those little uh, lipless crankbaits. I've got a, another jiggle fishing lipless crankbait that's slightly larger in size. I've never actually used that one. That's the next size up. If I do some trawling, I've got the uh, tubby native minnow. That's what I found, hooked a big carp on in here recently. <laughs> I've got some uh, some Domeki blades. They're all tangled together, so I'll just pull them up slowly. Some Domeki blades. I've got one of these. I'm, I'm keen to give this a crack. I forget the name of it. It's a Pontoon 21 something or other. It's got a rattle, but it's very, very metallic. It's very heavy. It's very metallic, and I'll be able to bob that up and down off the bottom without too many problems. I'm keen to give that a swim. But I think with the water in this lake being never really clear, it's good to have something shiny. So I'm going that bright yellow colour. I think that's called yellow snow. And I've also got uh, this silver one just here as well. Which I used over here with my dad recently and didn't do any good. But that was nearly a month ago and things have uh, warmed up quite a bit since then. I've got a couple of other little... See, look at these. These are old. I don't even think you can buy these anymore. Let's say uh, a man's 10 plus. The man's lures. I've got a man's 10. And that's a 15 plus actually. That's the 10 plus that it's tangled with. I've had them for years. So, uh, small to medium lures, very bright colour, and a rattle is always good. Alright, let's go see if I can find a hungry yellow belly. Right, got a slight change of plans here. I've just drifted from about 50 metres the other side of those trees, right down through here. 
I've stopped at each lot of trees and just bobbed for a few minutes. I've been going for about half an hour and haven't done any good. So I'm going to chuck on this tubby, tubby native minnow. And I'm going to troll for a little while and see how I go. I just had a real nice strike on the native, the tubby native. And I missed him. Bugger, didn't hook it up. It was a definite fish. No doubt about it. Just went whack, whack. That's the first strike of the night. Hey, see that mountain over there in the distance? That's where I filmed my introduction. I just had a hit. I felt it through my leg. It was a definite fish strike. I wasn't looking. I just felt a thump against my leg. I definitely had a hit then. Right while I was telling you where I filmed my introduction. But yeah, that's where I filmed my introduction. Probably on the left-hand side there on that bit of a saddle. That's Mount Samaria. That's two strikes that I've had. That must have been just out in front of them trees behind me. Got him! I missed the hookup, but I've got one. I've been filming for the last hour, and every 10 minutes or so I stop and then start filming again to start a fresh bit of footage. And I just happened to hit the lure when I stopped. It's a yellow belly. It's a little bit on the small side though. Not quite big enough, but it is a yellow belly. There you go, I've got to be a bit careful here. I don't want to end up with a, uh, a hook in my finger. <laughs> I might get a, uh, I might get a, uh, a photo. There we go, folks. Lovely little yellow belly. Guesstimate around about 26, 27 centimetres. See ya, buddy. Right, you're beauty. I've had uh, three strikes, including that one. Two that failed to hook up and that one that hooked up on the tubby native minnow. As always, I'll put a link in the video description to where you can find these. What I do, I troll for about 10 minutes and then I stop my GoPro and then start it again, just so that I don't end up with heaps of video files that are uh, really big. Just And I uh, just happened to stop it just at the time that that fish hit. <laughs> right here, I've got one on the board. It's five past seven and I've got my first fish on the board. One. Oh God help me hold oh, my breath as I wish for death Oh please go Got him! Yes! Oh this is a bigger one! Oh yes! Oh yes! Not a monster but he's bigger than the last one oh, Hopefully it's a yellow belly and not a cod But even still I don't think it's a, a legal size yellow belly even if it is It's putting up a bit more oh, it's, a, it's a yellow I'm not sure whether he, I don't think he's going to be legal but I'm gonna get the net as much as I don't want to because uh, the hooks keep tangling it. What's worth noting here is that that yellow belly has hit that lure despite it being covered in grass. There's a lot of grass in Lake Nilakuti at the moment because it's just recently refilled. I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a measure of this bloke, but I don't quite think he's 30 centimeters. I threw one back the other day that was 32, and I kind of regretted it. Oh yeah. I wanted it for a feed, I thought, will I won't I, will I won't I, nah. And then when I got home, the next day I thought, geez, I wish I'd kept that yellow belly. Right, now the smart thing to do is to leave the lure out there on the water so that it doesn't dig into my foot or get caught on the esky or anything like that. This is going to be pretty close, I reckon he might be under. But let's have a look. I've got it set on 30, it's hard because he won't lay down, I reckon he's right on the dot actually. Straighten your tail out mate. I'm leaning it against my shirt and the paddle. Oh, he's on. He's, he's good. He's 32. The same as the one that I regretted putting back the other day. Right, folks, he's not a monster, but his legal size is 32. The same as the one I put back the other day. He's going in the esky. I threw back four or five the other night. I've thrown back one tonight. This one's got no chance. <laughs> I think I was singing a Metallica song when that last yellow belly hit. I wonder what I'll call this video. Metalli Callop. <laughs> yellow Talica.
Got him. Oh, I missed him. Oh, no, he's still there. No, he's gone. Oh, that was a definite strike. <laughs> that was the same kind of strike as the first two. Strikes that don't hook up. <laughs> Got him. Yes, missed the hookup. I think he's very, very small. Look at that, folks. Am I even recording? Yes, I am. He hit it twice and didn't hook up. So I turned my GoPro off and stopped recording to start a fresh video file. But then he hit it a third time and did hook up. Hmm. There we go, folks. Another yellow belly. This one much smaller. Not even probably 20 centimetres. Golden perch. Boom, boom, boom. Golden perch. Boom, boom, boom. I am having a blast. Now, when I was over here the other day bait fishing, I caught three carp when the sun was out. Right on sunset, I caught a heap of cotton yellow belly, and today's been exactly the same. I hardly had a touch until sunset, and the last 10 minutes I've had about four or five fish strike my lure. The magic hour. Now, if you've never done this before, here's a bit of a tip, and this tip's effective for most of our native fish species and redfin. You want your lure to be just off the bottom. Whether your lure's diving to 25 feet or whether it's only diving to 5 or 6 feet, you want it to be up off the bottom just a little bit. Most of these fish will be around the structure that's on the bottom and they'll be feeding on the bottom on things like yabbies and stuff. Now, at the moment, mine, you can, when it's just going like that, that means it's swimming freely. But occasionally it'll hit a log or it'll hit the bottom and it'll just stutter a bit. It'll just, they look like it's got a nibble, like a bite. That means it's just touching the bottom. And that's what I want. I want it to just touch the bottom every now and again. See that? That's just hit the bottom there. Now it's swimming again. So I'm at a good depth. If it's constantly dragging, that means it's dragging the bottom. That means you're too shallow. You want to go out just a little bit, just to try and find a little bit deeper water. If you're paddling for ages and it's just swimming really well and not touching anything, then you may be too deep. So whatever lure you're using, you just want it to be just up off the bottom a little bit. That's, this is particularly popular, particularly handy information if you're trolling for redfin or yellowbelly. Because they both love to feed on yabbies and things that are hanging around the bottom of the water column and around the logs. So at the moment that's swimming really nice, but it has just touched the bottom every now and again. And that tells me that it's at a good depth. It's, right, it's just touched the bottom just there, just then. And now it's stopped. Now I don't know how deep this lure is getting down. I suspect about eight or nine feet. But whatever it's getting down to, it's just around the bottom or a little bit above. Ideally, if you could keep it a foot off the bottom, you'd be laughing. Righto, folks, I'm almost back at the car. I've had an absolutely fantastic evening. I'm very impressed with the tubby native minnow. It actually dives deeper than I thought it would. And obviously the yellow belly love it. I uh, caught three. Missed a few others. It was really slow to start with. It wasn't until sunset that the fish went mad for a little while, that magic hour. And I've had a blast. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, I want to give it a big fat thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you on my next fishing adventure.